Good morning, everybody. Decaf here from WiseFlightHeadquarters.com and WiseUpload.com. And today, we're going to talk about how to make the flat elliptical shape at the front of our canopy that we find on a lot of older jets between World War II and the 1970s. Um, this can actually be uh, done very, very simply with the methodology that we already do in scratch modeling aircraft. Uh, when we're making our aircraft, we always have um, a very elliptical kind of shape, uh, circular cross sections all the way around, and we just scale them to get to the right shape. But uh, if we do this way, we can't really uh, capture that flat face because it's always rounded. So how do we take care of that? Uh, first things first, um, if you don't use sub surf modifiers in your uh, workflow already, I recommend you do so. It really helps make life a little bit easier. Um, if not, that's okay. Uh, you can do it whatever way you want. Um, but yeah, I totally recommend that you use the subsurf modifiers. So if you are using subsurf modifiers, get the shape uh, something like this. Um, we really only need to pay attention to the uh, forward part of the cockpit here. Um, I'm ignoring everything back uh, towards the tail because I don't need it for this demonstration. Uh, one thing that you're going to want to make sure is that when you are setting this up that you have a vertice and a station set up just about at the beginning of where the flat face starts. Um, so you will need to manipulate these guys a little bit. You can um, move this forward aft however you need to in order to um, square that away. But once you get that into the right shape, um, you're going to hit uh, apply modifier down here in the button window and now we can go ahead and manipulate these shapes uh, now I am gonna have to go back and undo that except modifier simply because we're gonna have to do a couple of trial and error tests to see if we can get the shape appropriately sized so first thing that we're gonna do here is zoom all the way in make a controlled cut and go ahead and do this and I don't need to go all the way through but I do need to get uh, well past uh, the first layer um, and one thing that you we can see here is that we got a lot of extra vertices in there but we don't need to pay attention to those right now uh, we're just doing this for a test and we're going to fix that up later once we actually get the final uh, cut that we want so we just go in and delete all the unnecessary vertices Go ahead, delete vertices, and now we have our shape. Let's flip over to the solid view mode just so you can see this a little bit easier. Um, and there we go. There's our shape. But, you know, this isn't exactly the shape that we see back here. Uh, the bottom is actually pretty wide. Uh, it doesn't taper back in that much. So what we have to do is undo, unfortunately, all this lovely work back to when we have the modifier is still applied to this mesh. Something right about here. Double check that everything looks okay. It does. And what we're going to do is actually scale this front section up in the Y direction. What this does is it boosts out the uh, interference between the uh, two meshes. Boosts that out to the side so that we have a little bit better chance of getting the right uh, horizontal thickness that we want. Uh, so once again, we got to apply the modifier, go in here, and begin making our cut. We got that there, coming down like so, and once again, deleting all the extra vertices. Um, you may notice that this looks a little bit asymmetric. That's because I didn't uh, properly set up the uh, uh, cylinder when I was first making this, um, so it's a little bit different. Uh, the normal, but you would be putting in the effort and detail to make sure it all works out. And here we go. Here uh, we're going to take a look at this. We're going to just do an isolated view on these two just to see how this looks. And if we go into to the solid view mode on this guy again, we should be able to see that that is much wider now. But is it wide enough? That is the question. So we'll go back to wireframe, go into edit mode, and we'll just take a little look at this. And you know, that actually lines up pretty good. You can see the cut coming out over here, circling back around, and it interfaces pretty nice and smoothly 
back into everything else. So that, that was a little bit hard to see probably on screen, but you'll have to take my word for it that that was actually the right setup. So once we get it like this, uh, we're going to want to zoom in and make sure we clean up all the mesh here. We're going to want to merge vertices together um, just so that we don't have a ridiculous number of them uh, where we don't need them. Uh, wherever possible, we want to get rid of uh, triangular faces and make rectangular faces because that's going to make our final setup a lot easier. And once we get that all set, uh, what we're going to want to do is go ahead and select each and every one of the edge um, edges that surround uh, our cut. And this is where reducing the vertices on the side really helps because it reduces the number of edges that we have to select. And I'm going down pretty far. Um, not all the way to the bottom because we don't need to capture it quite that far down. Uh, and I'm just going to go in here and cheat a little bit and uh, do some selecting like this. I'll do that because I didn't mean to capture that face. There we go. Keep going. Boom. And there we go. We have just about everything selected except that guy. All right, there we go. Now we're going to separate that. Uh, and now we have the beginning of our cockpit there. So what you can do is go ahead and add in all of your uh, faces going across, making sure everything is looking all wonderful and peachy. And we are almost there. There we go. So let's unisolate this and we can take a look to see how this is going. And we're going to turn this to solid so we can see the interface there. And it looks pretty darn cool. Uh, from this we can uh, make a little loop cut on the inside to uh, sort of simulate this uh, buffer area right there, uh, the frame for the glass. But that's how we go ahead and make uh, flat uh, front faces for our cockpits. Uh, really, really handy for some of the older aircraft that are out there. So if you have any questions about this, go ahead and throw me a comment down below or send me a private message on wiseflightheadquarters.com. As always, I'm happy to try to answer your questions, and I look forward to seeing you in the future. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to find some cool add-ons for Wise Flight, head on over to wiseupload.com, the official add-on hosting site for wiseheadquarters.com.